has taken over. Let's go. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. Steaks, chicks, stacks. You and I are going to make a lot of money. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. It's Pharrell on a bench in the biggest way possible. Hanging out a bad seat, a broken eater, bad apple with a bad attitude, hanging around a bad letter, bad tape, bad lot, bad dude, bad breath, bad attitude, bad vibes. We are live in the Magic City Studios in the Pharrell Pleasure in New York City. People just pass bags, red right in traffic, along with Mike Carver. Hi, we got a good show for you today. Gabe Marenzi uh, will join us from Vancouver. Brady Cannon on Live, Davis Maddock. On the lion chair, Keith Stewart talking golf as well. Plus, Joey Prons, also known as Go for the Two, Lisi, a special draft preview today. This is Coast to Coast on a midweek Where Do You Hurt Wednesday. We got afternoon day ball, Carver High. What's going on around the majors? Yeah, uh, happy Wednesday uh, to you, Scotty. And yes, I-, I heard you say all that. You know, you're usually doing community service. I know. On Wednesdays. And I, I just had to still, you know, we have golf Wednesdays on C to C when you were out doing yeah. community service. I couldn't I couldn't keep that away. Uh even I'm glad though you were in the building it. today. I glad we gotta still it. do it. <laughs> gotta, I'm glad. Gotta, gotta have it. Uh yes, we do have uh some day ball this afternoon, and that is where uh we are going to start. Uh kind of light for a Wednesday. Usually we have a lot more games uh to get us going in the day ball, but only one so far, the Cardinals. Lead the Diamondbacks 2-1. to one. That is in the bottom of the seventh as they're flying along there. Uh, as the Cardinals just picked up a couple runs in the bottom of the sixth. So we'll see if they can close this one out. Uh, the Arizona destroyed them last night. 3-1 to one now, uh, Mafia is telling me. So 3-1 to one for the Cards as they extend over the Arizona Diamondbacks. I have two games in the afternoon as well that have yet to start that I figured we could uh, get some, go to the window with here. Uh, The Mets will finish off their series in San Francisco against the Giants. Giants beat them last night behind a sparkling effort from Logan Webb, Scotty. He has 19 straight scoreless innings now for the Giants. Uh, Blake Snell was supposed to start this game this afternoon for the Giants. That is not going to happen now scratched from his start goes on the il the old abductor strain Ugh. what do you think you think you should send that doctor bill scotty to boris uh considering i don't know he could have signed like four months ago and had like a real spring training instead of being rushed out there uh after signing a week before the season and getting his abductor strain two or three weeks in nice job scott uh getting your client yeah hurt. i mean uh <laughs> so far so bad in san francisco for uh blake snell he's done nothing now he's injured they're going for the sweep today they're gonna stick walker in there against Manaya. i'm gonna still go with them i uh you know they beat him last night with webb and i said yesterday i was on the mets but i was like this is their best pitcher webb so he's tough to deal with it won't be easy uh, if they're able to do those first two, why not sweep them? Why not sweep them? Right now, uh, the Mets with Benaya actually minus 115. Giants minus 105 with a 7.5 total uh, here this afternoon in that one. The other day ball game that I am going to have for you here is Orioles finishing off that series in Anaheim against the Angels. Uh, Angels did actually beat them last night, Scotty. Homer for Trout, his ninth of the year. He's right. looked very healthy and very good so far for, for Anaheim. And they will send Tyler Anderson out against the Dean. The Dean. Dean Kramer going for the O's, who are minus 135, plus a buck 15 for Anaheim and a fat nine and a half on a getaway afternoon out in Cali. Covey and Kramer has been um, pretty average. His ERA is hovering around five. Meanwhile, Anderson has been uh, pretty tough. A 1-4 ERA at this point. I'm going to take a stab with the Angels here again. Uh, And that was another bomb from Trout last night. We've been saying this here since the start. He actually looks like the Trout from four or five years ago now, right? Actually looks healthy, destroying the baseball. Uh, The team still kind of sucks, but at least he looks healthy for now, uh, like his old self. Well, as long as he's happy, because uh, if Otani left, I wouldn't be. Yeah, 
He would like that. But we've said this a few times, right? Uh, he just doesn't seem to care and likes that uh, easy Southern California living, playing for the second team in town. Not even in the same town. I mean, we've said this a billion times. Anaheim's another world <laughs> uh, compared to Los Angeles. It's another world. Who doesn't like uh, Southern California? I mean, honestly, <laughs> people that hate it love it. I mean, honestly, the people that hate it, you know, everybody there loves uh, Southern California. The homeless people love it. They got a great tan. Everybody's happy. Everybody should Everyone. be happy. Everyone should be happy uh, down there. That's for sure. So there's your day ball. One live, you know, two about right, to start. Out. I got oh, okay. five left. You got five more. If I oh. was living uh, in a tent... I would somehow find real estate near Dodger Stadium so that I could somehow finagle Dodger dogs into my daily repertoire of eating. Like, if I'm not going to get any food, I got to mooch, I got to roll the dice, try to get somebody to bring me out a Dodger dog. Some fan has to feel bad for me. I would set up my camp. As you know, you've seen a lot of that lately with protests. The camps yeah. around Columbia and New York City, there's a lot of protesters. Get them Dodger dogs, and then they'd all stop complaining. See, that's another thing that L.A. Uh, has over Anaheim, right? Not only is the team better, they got better food options uh, at better the game. They got options. the Dodger dogs over there <laughs> in Tevez Ravine, which is much better than whatever uh, they're slinging down in Anaheim uh, at the Big A. Uh, there you go. The day ball, two games about to start in the next hour. Uh, we will have our eye on those. Uh, let's also start today with the NBA, uh, because we finally cracked the egg last night, Scotty. You thought it would happen. The big run of home teams winning yep. and holding serve in the NBA playoffs finally came to a close. Two out of the three road teams did win straight up last night. Let's start with the late game. And why not? We've spent so much time talking about Los Angeles. We'll start there here with the hoops, too. Mavericks beating the Clippers 96-93. to They even this series at one game apiece. Lucas Scotty late getting involved and then giving the business uh, to the LA fans as well on TNT. Oh. Tina 32, 41 percent. Doncic five to shoot against Harden. Doncic lines it up. It goes. He is that guy. Ninety to the eighty-one. Bird. The Mavericks have their largest lead with a minute twenty-six to go in LA. Yeah, I'm, you know, I'm really, I just want to apologize here today early in the show for getting, uh, you know, all three NBA games right last night. And I mean, I hate to say it, but uh, the fact that I was able to uh, hit two of the three NHL playoff games as well. I'm so sorry uh, that I hit six of the seven games. I, I just, I don't want to get ahead of myself because I know there's, uh, you know, just a lot of people get flustered when I hit a lot of bets. They get flustered. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm sure uh, somebody will find a reason to be upset, right? Yeah, someone out. around uh, here has got to be upset. With somebody me. will be I'm upset. Blame Pharrell for uh, hitting too many bets. Blame it's Pharrell. Just, it, it's, uh, it's unfortunate. Uh, you're just too good uh, sometimes. Uh, and last night was another one. Of There's got to be something <laughs> yes, bad going it. on if I'm involved in it. <laughs> Luca, Luca had 32 uh, for the Mavs uh, as they get the job done here. I probably don't have enough time. I'll have to wait uh, on Kyrie and Kawhi. Uh, is that I think I can slide the Kyrie in. Uh, come on, let's get Kyrie slide in here in, very quickly. Uh, you know, uh, once again with Lights Kyrie, failure, failure has inspired him. Here we go. Yeah, I think failure uh, will inspire you uh, more than you can imagine. And not being able to make the playoffs last year uh, definitely hurt, stung, brought a lot of pain. Um, and, I, and the only way I, um, you know, felt – other than you know doing my prayer and meditation, but being able oh, to express some of those emotions was going on the basketball court. I was there right down is. the street at LA Tech, and some of my friends just you know being consistent with me uh, throughout those days. I'm grateful for all those times and pushing me. Very grateful. Uh, I was watching playoff games and then going to the gym the next day and be like, man, we should have been in the freaking playoffs. So it just imagining myself in different situations and pushing myself. Oh, I'm just surprised he has friends. He has friends. He just told you. He might have been lying, uh, but he probably wasn't. I'm sure he's got a couple left. Family.
people that bashed him will be eating their words this year. Pretty heavily favored to be a first round pick, minus 400 earlier this week. But that's not the surprise. If you're drafting JJ McCarthy in the first half of the first round, you clearly believe not only is he a starter, he's going to be your starter for years to come. But a popular bet was under three and a half wide receivers in the first round. The tape doesn't lie, baby. Only on Sports Grid. coming out about Embiid oh he's a warrior you'll never get him off the court that that just you're just telling me he's an injury he's one slip and fall away from what it's not seeing him anymore in this series I would have sat him because there was only one day between the two games it's two days between games two and games three and it's two game two days between games three and game four betting above the rim only on sports grid Game time had 35 yep. in the first half, Cam. And then, of course, he did not have another point the rest of the game. Lillard, it's playoff game time. This guy will show up. He will hit shots. Indiana, you better respond here because I'll tell you, that's a bad, bad, bad loss. We were wrong, Carver. Like, hey, we I were. admit, I was on the Pelicans. This game, I lost. Pharrell, coast to coast, only on Sports Grid. Oh, what's up? You watching the game? or maybe the one later. Put a little BetMGM action on it, and now any game becomes the game. When you got overs and unders, you're in it every time they throw the ball, kick the ball, dribble the ball. Maybe it's not even a ball. Who needs a ball? Now that bet's got you watching every inning, half, round, period, set, hole, a lap. Right from the edge of your seat. Hit him with the promo. joins us every day you can catch sports rage every weeknight at 10 p.m eastern on sports grid sports grid tv sports grid.com slash watch the sports grid app uh on all of our affiliates everything on the radio side even like uh 1090 in san diego all over the west coast from mexico to the canadian rockies of course sports byline usa sirius xm channel 159 tonight at 10 Sports rage, don't miss it. All the kids are watching. Everybody digs Marenzi. All right, Marenzi, I want to start with the NBA. Uh, I hit all three games last night. How did you do in those three games, and what are you looking at for tonight's doubleheader of pro rack playoffs? Yeah, last night everything fell into place uh, for us, Scott. We talked about liking the Minnesota Timberwolves, not liking a matchup for the Phoenix Suns. Came to fruition. Uh, nice effort last night uh, by the Indiana Pacers. Big time effort, uh, Pascal Siakam. How about Pascal Siakam? He's a badass. Um, you know, no, seriously, he was underappreciated with the Toronto Raptors. And is it just me, Scott, or maybe would the Raptors been better off keeping Pascal Siakam and OG Ananobi? Aren't like they pretty good players? Yeah, really. But like seriously, like the Knicks are twenty two and three with uh, with OG Ananobi in a lineup right. this year. They're literally twenty two and three now, and Pascal Siakam freaking dropped thirty seven, bro. Looks like a mega superstar out there, but no, we're gonna we're gonna rebuild a team around Scotty Barnes. I think that that's the way to go. We don't want to pay Siakam all that money. Okay, well that's why right you know, that's why you had a 15 game losing streak and in the regular Barrett. season. <laughs> yeah, and you know, listen, R.J. Barrett's okay, but that's Siakam, all. bro, the guy's a star. He really is. And what I love about Siakam, Scott, you you watch the NBA as much as anybody. You watch guys' games. He gets better. Like, he actually tries to get better. You know what I mean? He's not one of these dudes, well, I'm in the NBA, I am who I am. No, I look, he's bigger, he's stronger, he's better in the paint, he's a better shooter now. Like, he improves his game no on a yearly basis, which is super impressive. 
right? It's not like, oh, I'm just, I'm who I am. I won a championship. I score 22 a night because he does. Guy scores 22, 23, automatic, Scott, right? Yeah. As sure as the sun sets, like he's going to try, he's going to give you the 22, 23. But now he's starting to give you those 32, the 37s, the 29s, yeah. the passing, the rebound, the defenses. Man, he's a baller, bro. What a game from him last night. You can prop him. I propped him last night for the over and, and hit that too. Uh, he's a freak of nature. You know, he works hard, gets his uh, space, gets uh, to his spots that he likes, and then uh, the rest is just all out, like all out behavior. He goes all out on 50-50 balls, goes all out on the glass, goes all out on both ends, offensive, defensive boards. Guy works to get the ball in his hands and then puts it in the hole. I love his game. I like betting on him. This is a good team. And I said that uh, last night in the other game, the key for me was Mike Conley shot so horribly in game one that he was never going to have a bad game back-to-back shooting because he has great control over his J. He had scoop shots with his left hand going last night, hit a bunch of Js. At one point, he was like seven of eight from the floor. I thought Conley, the difference in him added to what they had going with everybody else. All the bench guys, not not bench, but the nobodies on that team went off last night in many. Well, that's, Daniels, that's the McDaniels. whole thing, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I, listen, I'm a big T-Wolf backer. I like, the, I like Walker. I like the depth of the team. I like the defensive style that they play. But as far as the Mavericks are concerned, you're right. Listen, you know what Luka's going to do. You know what Kyrie's going to do. You need others to step up, just point blank. And... And we're, you know, we're, we're seeing that right now. Similar situation. Minnesota needs points, right? When, when uh, Carl Anthony Towns wasn't on the floor, Conley steps up, starts popping those threes uh, for them. Now they go back to the desert. Listen, I would expect Phoenix to, to win game three, but I don't right. think they're going to win the series. They probably go back to, to Minneapolis uh, with, with a split. I do lean Phoenix. I know they're not playing until Friday night, but I do think Phoenix will get the win on Friday night. All right, what's your uh, action going for tomorrow's NFL draft in Detroit? I know you got a lot of great picks there. I'm starting to stockpile the plays a little bit uh, here, Scott. My portfolio is really starting to grow, uh, you know, and people are expecting this to be the most offensive players ever taken in an NFL draft uh, before. The record is 19 for the record. So 19 offensive players. It's happened three times before. People are expecting 22 offensive players, Scott. So I've got a bet in over 20 and a half. I laid a little juice, but I parlayed it with the New York Rangers last night. Oh, <laughs> so now, nice. uh, now I just need 21, 21 players to be taken. Um, I got Marvin Harrison going to the Arizona Cardinals. All right, I got this in at minus 180. I'm stone cold locked in on this one. We like Brock Bowers to be a top 10 pick, Scott, uh, the tight end out of Georgia. I don't think he's going to get past the New York Jets at 10. The Tennessee either. Titans might pull the trigger. You know, hey, maybe the Giants pull the trigger. Maybe the Chargers pull the trigger. There's, he's just too talented for me that he's going to fall all the way uh, to 11. And uh, we got total offensive linemen in the first round, under nine and a half. Uh, offensive lineman. I got, I'm got. i locked in on Jaden Daniels to be the second pick. But if we start to get into some player props here, Scott, Jared Verse. I'm a big Jared Verse fan, all right? Defensive edge lineman out of uh, Florida State. Florida State, yeah. Yeah, he, he's a baller, this kid. He wasn't a big-time recruit, Scott. He's from Albany, New York, which isn't like a football hub. And he just worked his ass off and became a stud. He's a physical specimen. I think the Rams are going to take him with the 19th pick, like specifically. So I'm going to, you know, they need someone to replace Aaron Donald. I think it's a good fit there. And his prop is actually 16 and a half. So that's another bet that I have. Uh, Jared Verse over. Um, and I'm going to start, you know, I got some specific, I'm going to take some shots with like, I think Michael Penix is going to end up on the Raiders. So I'll roll the dice with that. I think JJ McCarthy is going to be a Viking. I'll roll the dice with that as well. Yeah, and I like that kid Williams out of Missouri, the defensive end. I could see him uh, stealing a spot. A, a lot of people have him down a little bit more. I think he's a badass. When we come back with Morenci, we'll talk about the Stanley Cup playoffs.
people that bashed him will be eating their words this year. Pretty heavily favored to be a first round pick, minus 400 earlier this week. But that's not the surprise. If you're drafting JJ McCarthy in the first half of the first round, you clearly believe not only is he a starter, he's going to be your starter for years to come. But a popular bet was under three and a half wide receivers in the first round. The tape doesn't lie, baby. Only on Sports Grid. coming out about Embiid oh he's a warrior you'll never get him off the court that that just you're just telling me he's an injury he's one slip and fall away from what it's not seeing him anymore in this series I would have sat him because there was only one day between the two games it's two days between games two and games three and it's two game two days between games three and game four betting above the rim only on sports grid Game time had 35 yep. in the first half, Cam. And then, of course, he did not have another point the rest of the game. Lillard, it's playoff game time. This guy will show up. He will hit shots. Indiana, you better respond here because I'll tell you, that's a bad, bad, bad loss. We were wrong, Carver. Like, hey, we I admit, I was on the Pelicans. This game, I lost. Pharrell, coast to coast, only on Sports Grid. We're talking to Marenzi on Coast to Coast. Good to have you with us. Uh, let's start with the Canucks. Uh, I bet on uh, Nashville, and I said why. I don't buy Casey DeSmith. Uh, I never bought Jari. I never bought DeSmith. I wish they would have got rid of both of them. Uh, instead, now they got the Ned playing in net, and they're all golfing and fishing in Cancun, uh, not in the playoffs. But your boy came in last night and had uh, to, you know, take over the job for the Canucks, and they got whacked. They did not lose, though, because of the goaltending. They couldn't score, just point blank. Now, I'm not going to deny I didn't like one of the goals. Smith is. He kind of fights the puck. What happened, Scott, is Nashville scored like a minute into the game. By flicking the puck at the net, it bounced off like two bodies and went in the net. Like it wasn't the goalie couldn't do anything about it. It was one of those just fluke hockey god type of goals to make his right. life more difficult. And, you know, there was a goal, you know, he fought the puck a little bit. There was one that bounced off his chest protector. It led to a rebound. It led to a goal that you'd like to see him control a little bit more. Uh, but no, Scott, it was unbelievable last night. The Nashville Predators. The amount of shots that these guys blocked last night, to put it in perspective. So, you know, people would say, oh, the Vancouver Canucks played poorly. I was at game one. They played better last night than they did in game one, but that's hockey. Really? They had a plus 48 shot differential last night, Scott. Plus 48. It was their largest shot differential in the game since 2010. Okay? They had 84 shot attempts last night to Nashville's 36. 84 it's insane it was a shooting gallery last night but let's give credit to the national predators man they block every one of these shots they sacrificed their body they were limping off the ice they took pucks off the knee they took pucks off the the ankle off the foot off the toes they were blocking everything and to vancouver's uh fault they kept shooting right into them Right, It was like, guys, figure it out. Like They're blocking the shot. So how about you give them a little fake and go around them because you keep on doing the same thing. Like Pedersen had nine shots last night. I think like six of them were blocked. Like he kept on shooting the same shot over and over and expecting a different result. 
So whether it was Demko, whether it was Casey DeSmith, or whether it was me between the pipes last night, Vancouver couldn't buy a goal last night. That's the way it is, Scott. You know hockey. Dude, you get 84 shot attempts. You figure you're going to score, right? <laughs> More than one goal. You would hockey, think. It's the way it works out. Yeah. One but thing DeSmith led to another. does need to tighten up, though. He does well, yeah. need to tighten up those rebounds on Friday. They can't give up four goals a game and expect uh, to win. Colorado put five in in Ferelepeg last night, and even that series, the overtime game was in Sunrise. Florida gets it done as usual. All they do is win, and the Rangers had to work for that 4-3 win over the Capitals at the Garden. We saw that was quite a gutsy effort from the Caps last night. We saw from the onset the, the desperation. It's the one thing about NHL teams, man. You're going to get a better effort. We saw it with Nashville after losing game one, Scott. Uh, we saw it with the Washington Capitals after losing game one. Uh, we saw it with the Toronto Maple Leafs after losing game one. Right. And the Capitals just don't quite have enough. So, you know, it looked like the same thing with the Colorado Avalanche. But, you know, props to the Caps. They gave them all they can give. They probably get swept. Maybe they win one game uh, in Washington if they catch New York sort of taking them lightly or they take the pedal off the metal a little bit, which I don't think they will. I think the Rangers understand the big picture and it's easier to win the cup the, le- the less games you play. You're you right. know what I mean? This is, such, this is such a wear and tear on your body, man, the NHL playoffs. You don't want to play unnecessary games because you want to watch the other teams go seven games. But you talk, to, you know, talk about goaltending, Scott. How about Connor Hellebuck, who's supposedly supposed to be one of the best goalies in the, in the NHL? How about this? Last six playoff games. He's got a save percentage of 8.76. His goals against average is 4.34. The Jets are screwed if he can't stop a puck. It's amazing because uh, in the regular season, every game that they played was a five and a half total. So tonight, yeah. Boston's in Toronto, Vegas in Dallas, up one in that series. I think Dallas will be flying tonight. And L.A. really has their backs to the wall in Edmonton. They need to get one. They need to play better than they did in the 7-4 loss. Tricky card uh, tonight. It's hard to trust the Leafs, but I'm going to roll the dice with the Leafs uh, tonight. I think Dallas do get it done, Scott. It was 80 cents overnight. I see 60 cents now. It's more tolerable. Right. And I think the same result. I think the Oilers win, but not a blowout tonight. Oh. All right, Marenzi. Great stuff. Enjoy the games tonight. Thanks, Scott. People that bashed him will be eating their words this year. Pretty heavily favored to be a first-round pick, minus 400 earlier this week. But that's not the surprise. If you're drafting J.J. McCarthy in the first half of the first round, you clearly believe not only is he a starter, he's going to be your starter for years to come. But a popular bet was under three and a half wide receivers in the first round. The tape doesn't lie, baby. Only on Sports Grid. out about Embiid oh he's a warrior you'll never get him off the court that that just you're just telling me he's a injury he's one slip and fall away from what it's not seeing him anymore in this series I would have sat him because there was only one day between the two games it's two days between games two and games three and it's two game two days between games three and game four betting above the rim only on sports grid Game time had 35 yep. in the first half, Cam. And then, of course, he did not have another point the rest of the game. Lillard, it's playoff game time. This guy will show up. He will hit shots. Indiana, you better respond here because I'll tell you, that's a bad, bad, bad loss. We were wrong, Carver. Like, hey, we I were. admit, I was on the Pelicans. This game, I lost. Pharrell, coast to coast, only on Sports Grid.
Pet MGM is simply the best sports book, and they got the best mobile app, and they got the best deals. How about uh, the first bet offer of fifteen hundred? How do you get it? Well, you download the BetMGM Sportsbook app on iOS or Android or visit BetMGM.com. Sign up, deposit at least 10 bucks into your new account. Place your first wager and receive up to $1,500 back in bonus bets if the bet loses. If the bet does lose, your bonus bets will be available once your initial wager is settled. How can you top? The BetMGM first bet 1500 back in bonus bets. You cannot top that anywhere. All right, Carver High, we continue on with the NBA. Yeah, uh, one more thing, Scotty, from this Clipper Mav game from last night. I just wanted to give you Kawhi because, of course, he returned last night. He had not played since March the 31st. Uh, coming back, uh, he was good at shoot around, got in the game 35 minutes, 7 for 17 from the floor. Not the best performance, he says. Uh, what do you expect? I haven't played in a while. Where are you conditioning-wise right now? Um, it's my first game in like 20-something days, but um, I don't know. I'm, I'm not measuring that. Uh, we got to be better as a unit um, overall, and, um, you know, it starts with me. And, you know, I got to, you know, even if my wind is low, I got to find a way. I don't think he'll have uh, two bad games in a row. My man can flat out score. I, you know, there is doubt around his game with his body. Uh, he's always got something wrong with him. Uh, it's just unbelievable uh, the amount of injuries that he gets. But it is what it is. When he plays and he's in his element, if you will, he can be very dynamic and score at will. Uh, and he can knock down shots from anywhere at will. So I actually don't believe, like, I didn't play for a week, and I went out this morning and played, and I was like, I looked at this dude on the sideline after one of the games, and I go, yeah, I don't, I don't feel good. <laughs> I don't feel good. I don't feel <laughs> – I, I didn't feel strong. I didn't have wind. I didn't have energy. I didn't have anything. And then, you know, I still played, but I didn't do anything. And I think that's kind of the deal. You don't play for 20 days. You just – you're not going to walk out there and start dealing on people when you've gassed out for 20 days. Uh, I bet the next game he has a way better game. Uh, I would bet that as well. Uh, I'll be going for the overs there uh, with them on Friday. Same thing I said with Conley, Mike. Uh, I told yeah, you Conley was going to have a huge game last night because he does not shoot that poorly ever. And he went out and shot the lights out. Uh, the first road team to win, we mentioned the Mavs did win, but the Pacers also were. They played before them. 125-128 in Milwaukee over the Bucks. Pascal Siakam with 37 had himself a huge night. I'm actually going to, you know, forget Carlisle, Scotty, because honestly, he's stiff as a board. We saw that yeah. yesterday. I found, I found this Bobby Portis stuff. I thought it was even better. Let's do Doc first, though. Uh, here's Doc talking about afterwards, basically uh, saying what was true. They got beat up physically by the Pacers in this game? I just thought they were more physical. You know, the reason we were on the floor is because they put us on the floor. You know, I thought they were on the floor in the first game. And and they, they flipped it on us tonight. So, um, like, I don't – what should they do? They should do that, right? I, you know, and it is personal. Uh, we're trying to win something uh, that they want. They're trying to win something we want. And the game should be personal. So, you know, it's 1-1. One, one. You know, we'd love to go be 2-0, but it's 1-1. We go to Indiana and go win a game or two. Yeah, why not? Yeah, listen, uh, you, it's just a matter of time. It's just a matter of time before this guy loses again. So if you don't have, in my view, Giannis Antetokounmpo out on the floor soon, they're going to lose this series. Uh, because with him, the Pacers owned the Bucks. Without him, the Pacers will beat the Bucks. It's just that simple. And Siakam was unbelievable. I, you know, I, honestly, I got to just give you this. 16 of 23 from the floor, 3 of 4 from 3, 2 of 3 from the line in 36 minutes. No turnovers. I mean, you got to be kidding me. 37 points, 11 rebounds, 6 dimes. You talk about a monster double-double of near perfection. Siakam's that guy. He really is. Uh, and you mentioned Giannis, so I'll give you the update that I saw this morning on him, which was from the Athletic. I'm t it says that Giannis has started to do some stationary jump shooting 
Still not much cutting, not scrimmaging, not running yet. Seems like the Bucks have to be prepared he's not to playing. keep going without him. He's not playing. You got that precisely right. Uh, he's not playing anytime soon. All right, here's here's Bobby Portis. So I guess after Doc talked, uh, they went and found Portis there in the hallway and asked him about the physicality and them, uh, you know, being more physical than Portis really didn't want to hear that. Quite frankly, they front runners, bro. Y'all can just tweet that whatever it is, bro. I mean, when it's going good, they y'all uh, we laugh and clap and all that. When it's going bad, then they not saying nothing. So I think think to answer the question, guys always feel good when they having a good game and hitting shots. So everybody, I think that's just you know human nature in basketball. When you're making shots, you're feeling good. But when it's tough going, you can't get nothing going. You know, you kind of go the other way. So yeah, they supposed to feel good. They was hitting shots. They game plan for really well and yeah they're supposed to feel good of course but game three on the way for all that i they think he's right scotty they front runners he said about the pace wow. they just front look, runners <laughs> look here's the deal he's right about one thing when you're knocking down shots and you're winning uh you feel good real simple he's right about yeah. that he's right about that uh and sure they enough they will play there. they that they guy has points. got massive real estate there I mean, they just think he is the greatest thing ever. Every time the guy comes out of the game, they chant his name, and they just absolutely adore this guy. He should think long and hard before he ever considers leaving there. He's got the cushy gig in Milwaukee. They think he can do no wrong. He's got a lot of juice uh, there, that's for sure, a lot of juice. Uh, and finally, the T-Wolves uh, beat up on the Suns again, Scotty, 105-93. to Close game for a half, uh, and the t- uh, Timberwolves rolled them in the third quarter of this game. Uh, and really, it wasn't even Ant, uh, Scotty, who was getting them last night. It was Jaden McDaniels yep. who had himself a huge game. Your boy had 25 points getting it done in the fourth quarter on TNT. And without your best player on the floor, and Anthony Edwards, so impressive here what the Timberwolves have been able to do. McDaniels slithers in this game here in the second. Remember, Minnesota was down a point at halftime. McDaniels keeps on coming. Yeah, I thought he had a great game. 10 of 17 from the floor, 2 of 4 from downtown, 3 of 4 from the line in 41 minutes. He had uh, one turnover. Look, um, I thought, you know, obviously Ann had a bad game, uh, 3 of 12, but Conley didn't. 18 points, four rebounds, four dimes. I thought he played great. Three threes, one of one on his free throws. Uh, I didn't, you know, two turnovers in the whole game. I thought Conley uh, was the difference. Obviously, Gobert went 18 and nine. I thought he had a strong game as well. And for being in as much uh, foul trouble as he was, uh, I thought uh, Cat Towns also played pretty well in the second half. Yeah, uh, and on the other side, Scotty, I, I just thought the Suns looked uh, absolutely lifeless uh, again. Yeah. They just gave you absolutely nothing. Look like they don't want to be there. Maybe that's going to change uh, when they get themselves back to Phoenix, and later on I'll play you uh, Duran talking about it. But uh, they just do not look like they are long for these NBA playoffs. So once again, the big Duran threesome didn't work in Brooklyn, and now he's got Booker and, and Beal in Phoenix. It ain't going to work there either, it looks like. I think it really hurt him that Allen went down uh, with an ankle. You got to remember he led the NBA in threes uh, this year and he left the game, never came back. Duran had 18. I mean, a Beal, uh, I thought shot relatively you know, poor. I, he ended up with 14. Booker uh, had 20 in the game. I thought Gordon played a strong game for the Suns with his 15 spot. It's just not good enough. They are going to play their asses off in Game 3 in Phoenix. You can guarantee that. They will be a different team in the desert. People that bashed him will be eating their words this year. Pretty heavily favored to be a first-round pick, minus 400 earlier this week. But that's not the surprise. If you're drafting J.J. McCarthy, 
in the first half of the first round. You clearly believe not only is he a starter, he's going to be your starter for years to come. But a popular bet was under three and a half wide receivers in the first round. The tape doesn't lie, baby. Only on Sports Grid. coming out about Embiid oh he's a warrior you'll never get him off the court that that just you're just telling me he's a injury he's one slip and fall away from what it's not seeing him anymore in this series I would have sat him because there was only one day in between the two games it's two days between games two and games three and it's two game two days between games three and game four betting above the rim only on sports grid Game time had 35 yep. in the first half, Cam. And then, of course, he did not have another point the rest of the game. Lillard, it's playoff game time. This guy will show up. He will hit shots. Indiana, you better respond here because I'll tell you, that's a bad, bad, bad loss. We were wrong, Carver. Like, hey, we I were. admit, I was on the Pelicans. This game, I lost. Pharrell, coast to coast, only on Sports Grid. And we are back from coast to coast here on a Wednesday. Carver High here with you. Scotty be back in a moment. It is Golf Wednesdays as well on C2C, which we always love. And we are going to get ready for Liv this week. Liv is back after a couple weeks off. They're on the other side of the world from us, but they are back. And Brady Cannon is back with us as well. And he's taking, this is a big task for Brady now. He's 1-0 in our live spots uh, so far this season, as he had the Dean uh, last time out in Miami. We're heading to Australia. We're heading to Adelaide. Brady, great to see you as always. Yeah, Mike, uh, we were talking there backstage. I should just quit and bat a thousand for the rest of my life on the live circuit. But no, we're yeah. we're diving back in, my friend. And I, I love doing these little spots because it gets me handicapping this tour and gets me interested. And you know, I, I've talked about it many times. There's a lot of players on this tour that I don't really care about. Uh, but there's a dozen or so that uh, are still very interesting, engaging, compelling golf personalities. Hopefully, they'll all come together once again with the PGA Tour and we can start fresh and have those guys back in the fold. But you mentioned Adelaide, the Grange Golf Course, a very small golf course. Rarely on any yeah. tour do we get a golf course this short, under 7,000 yards. Tree-lined, narrow fairways, dog legs in both directions. And I used that in my handicap this week, Mike. I, I compared it to uh, Harbortown, where we just were mm. on the PGA Tour. You know, that's a very claustrophobic, tight, tree-lined course with dog legs in both directions, which also compares very well to TPC Sawgrass. So I looked at that. And then also Colonial Country Club in Fort Worth, where they play the Charles Schwab Challenge. Um, those co uh, courses are all similar, and I don't really know this golf course in, in Adelaide all that well, but from what I could tell online looking at the flyovers and everything, I think those are three pretty decent comp courses. Uh, and what I also like about this course, Brady, uh, is they've tried to incorporate a little bit of like the TPC Scottsdale uh, type of scene yeah. that they have there, and they've done that with this watering hole course, uh, hole on number 12, the par three. Chase Kepka had the hole in one there last year. Everybody threw the beer cans on like they do uh, at the WM uh, in Phoenix. So I think that that's a cool aspect. I saw Cameron Smith talking about this event uh, this morning. Of course, him being an Aussie and his team uh, that he has saying, you know, this is what we should be doing. And I think he's kind of right. Playing these international courses that maybe fans have not seen a lot. Uh, I think it's a perfect time for us too, uh, Brady, when you talk about betting it because 
It's Thursday. It's being on the other side. Thursday, Friday, Saturday night, 9.30 East at night uh, tee off for me, 6.30 for you uh, out west in Vegas. Helps to watch as well for us here in the States with that time. Absolutely. You know, it's just like any sport. The same theory applies. If you've got a couple bucks on it, you're more likely to watch. And I had never watched a live event you know, in, in the history of the live circuit, which is, I don't know, two and a half years old now or so, yeah. uh, until, you know, we got involved in this segment and covering this, uh, on sports grid on a week, not a weekly basis, but for every tournament that they, that they, ha- that they get going. And, you know, it, it has me interested. It has my eyeballs on it. And like I say, you know, hopefully you get the cream of the crop rising to the top because those are the players I really care about. There's a lot of guys you know, the top 30 or so on this circuit, some of them you haven't even heard of. Um, but, you know, the yeah. Dustin Johnsons and the Kepkas and, and John Rahm and, and Joaquin Neiman, hey, those, no matter where they play, they're still exciting. There's a few guys I, I, I used to bet on all the time that I love, and I obviously don't see them anymore on the PGA. Guys like, I used to bet Cameron Tringali like I had a problem, Brady. And now he's uh, <laughs> Maybe here you on did. the Maybe you did <laughs> have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Him and Sebastian Munoz, I could never quit them yeah. uh, for those first-round leaders back in the day, and now I can find them here at Live. All right, let's get down to it, me and you, the picks uh, for this weekend in Adelaide, in Australia. Here is where I am going to go, Brady, for myself. I'm going to go with the hometown guy. I think Cameron Smith is going to try to go a little extra this week, obviously being down there. He's talked about it glowingly. I don't think he played poorly at the Masters. Finished in the top 10, 10 to 1 for him, so a little chalky. Gooch destroyed this place last year uh, on his way to a win, so he's 14 to 1. I feel like DJ's got to show up with, I, he played so bad at the Masters. I feel like he's got to show up with a little bit of something on his shoulder, a little chip on his shoulder, and I'll bomb it with Garcia because Brady. Garcia's been in a lot, a lot of these events on Liv. He's lost in a He's bunch of well. playoffs. Seems like he has shown up. That's where I'm going to go for the big board. Yeah, you're right about Sergio. He's been a little bit surprising. I mean, he was so off for basically ever since he won the Masters. Uh, but no, you're right. And, and thankfully, Dean Burmester was able to get past him in Miami a few weeks ago for that winner we had because, once again, Sergio was in a playoff there. Um, I went with guys, you know, and when we were talking Miami, Burmester, Moronk, I think those were my only two plays, big hitters. I went with big, long bombers off the tee, a little bit different this week. I went with the shorter knockers, you know, that kind of fit that Harbortown colonial mold. I started with Terrell Hatton at 12 to 1. This guy's been very good as of late. He was eighth at Mayakoba on the live circuit, which is another accuracy-based golf course. He was fourth four weeks ago in Miami, and then ninth at the Masters. He's fourth in putting on the Live Tour, eighth in scrambling, and 11th in birdies. He's done very well at the Players' Championship and Colonial and also Harbortown. Abraham Answer at 25 to 1. Second on the Live Tour in fairways hit, fifth in birdies. You mentioned how Taylor Gooch destroyed this place. It is going to be a birdie fest, and you're going to have to go low. He's also done finished runner-up at Harbortown, never missed a cut at the players, two top 15s at Colonial. And then Kevin Na at 65-1, to 1, the perennial short knocker, great with the flat stick, great scrambler, has some good finishes as of late. He's been money at Harbortown. He's won at Colonial. And then I added one here just moments before the show, Ooh, Jason Kokrak. Ball. Jason oh. Kokrak at 60 to 1 kind of is more the mold of a bigger hitter, but this guy has top 10s at Harbortown. He's got a top 10 at TPC Sawgrass, and he's also one at Colonial. I think he can yep. dial it down, take the driver out of the bag, hit some irons off the tee. He's shown that he can perform on these shorter tracks. I hit him at Colonial that time, Brady. I used to not quit ah, Jason Kokrak. I did too. Either, and we have I did too. Again. I'll throw you a bonus ball before we leave. Plus 300 for a hole-in-one on the watering hole. Chase kept it right, last let's year. Do it. Let's get a little fun with the hole-in-one out there. Get the beers on. Brady Cannon with a slim golf. We're back in the
people that bashed him will be eating their words this year. Pretty heavily favored to be a first round pick, minus 400 earlier this week. But that's not the surprise. If you're drafting JJ McCarthy in the first half of the first round, you clearly believe not only is he a starter, he's going to be your starter for years to come. But a popular bet was under three and a half wide receivers in the first round. The tape doesn't lie, baby. Only on Sports Grid. coming out about Embiid oh he's a warrior you'll never get him off the court that that just you're just telling me he's an injury he's one slip and fall away from what it's not seeing him anymore in this series I would have sat him because there was only one day between the two games it's two days between games two and games three and it's two game two days between games three and game four betting above the rim only on sports grid Game time had 35 yep. in the first half, Cam. And then, of course, he did not have another point the rest of the game. Lillard, it's playoff game time. This guy will show up. He will hit shots. Indiana, you better respond here because I'll tell you, that's a bad, bad, bad loss. We were wrong, Carver. Like, hey, we I were. admit, I was on the Pelicans. This game, I lost. Pharrell, coast to coast, only on Sports Grid. Getting involved with Carver High. Nice. And more golf later on this very program. Al uh, Pharrell with Yep, golf, uh, golf Wednesdays. We go from live, and then we'll do uh, the PGA, which is in one of your favorite places this week, Scotty. New Orleans oh. uh, at the Zurich uh, Classic this week. And the good oh. news for everyone is Scheffler's taking the week off. Uh, so there's no Scotty <laughs> Scheffler this week. There's so. an opening. <laughs> There's an, op- an opportunity there's an opening for us uh, this week at uh, at Zurich. Uh, let's finish up uh, last night's NBA. Top of the hour, we'll get into uh, tonight's games. Only two games tonight, which, let's be honest, uh, is weak. Uh, why can't we can't at least have three games on the schedule tonight. Uh, no, I mean... Here's Durant. Here's Durant after the game. Uh, simply, here he is with Booker. Both these guys look miserable. Uh, what went wrong last night, Kevin? Let's go. Yeah, they, they went on a run. I mean. Oh. We was trying to figure it out. Um, you didn't. Anything, they just they just played great ball, you know. Um, and we uh, we trying our best to you know get out of those little slumps when we you know go on a seven eight zero run. Um, and I think we still try to put ourselves in position to win there. We cut to like thirteen, like twelve, but we just couldn't get over that hump. So this team's been killing us in the third with those runs. So we got to figure that out. Yeah, I think they need to, uh, frankly, uh, go at a different pace and shoot more. I mean, uh, I got to get more than 15 shots for him. I got to get more than 17 shots for Beal. I got to get clearly more than 13 shots for D-Book. You want a recipe for losing? Uh, There it is. These three guys have to score more and shoot more and get more opportunities. And uh, to be honest with you, I think the guy that played the best was Nurkic at the end of the day because he had a double-double, he had 10, and he had 14 rebounds. He's doing the work, and I just don't think they're shooting enough. They're letting uh, Minnesota control everything, the shots, the tempo, the pace, the transition game, the runs. He's right about one thing. They went on a run. They went on a bury-you run. They buried him, and I thought, obviously – McDaniels was unbelievable. You know what I liked about his game last night was that he didn't get caught up in it. He just looked like a guy that was flat out balling, and he didn't get excited, changed his demeanor one iota off of hitting big shots 
or making big plays or slithering to the 10. The guy was making so many layups, it wasn't even funny. And they didn't play defense. The Suns don't play defense. They don't. They let guys shoot layups and dunks left and right. It's embarrassing. Uh, it certainly is. Uh, although, look, this is one of those series, as lifeless as the Suns have looked, would it completely stun you, Scotty, if they went and won both games in Phoenix? No. And we went back 2-2 in Minnesota? Probably wouldn't stun you as lifeless as they looked uh, in these Guaranteed. first two. I could see it. Guaranteed. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I it's could see it. automatic. They will go back. I believe – I heard Morenci. I believe that they'll go back to Minneapolis 2-2. Okay. Hey, home teams have been winning. We've talked about it a lot. Uh, the other thing that's been hitting, Scotty, is unders. Uh, unders have been extremely hot in the playoffs so far for the NBA. You did get one over last night, that Pacer game, but overall, 11-3 and three through the first 14 games to the under. These games are just tight, Scotty. You've seen these games, 96-93, 103-93. It's just a very tight basketball being played so far. Yeah, and I think tonight that ends. And not only that, I think both games go over tonight. Ooh, both games over the total. I love to see that. We will talk about both games at the top of the hour. They started handing out the awards last night. And, you know, we try not to get too wrapped up in this stuff. But we said this a few times during the year. Uh, Maxi won the most improved player uh, in the NBA. Wasn't he already a badass? Why was he the most improved player? That Kobe White on the Bulls, like he was the most improved player in the NBA this year. I thought they got that way wrong, these guys. Yeah, I wouldn't argue with that. I think that uh, Kobe was unbelievable, and I uh, agree with you. I think Tyrese already was. Already was a badass. Uh, stole it from Kobe White. That's what they did. All right, we will come back. Uh, and we will start hour number two with the two games tonight. The Heat looking to uh, try to get something going in Boston against the Celtics. And then Pelicans and the Thunder getting back together after that great finish that they had on Sunday night. They will play game two at the Chesapeake. We'll give you all the numbers for those when we come back. Yeah, I got to tell you, uh, a lot of Sharps are pounding the Pelicans. And then as far as the other game, I don't see any leaks in that ship in Boston, uh, at home, at the garden, on that floor, in that building. I don't see the heat doing it there at all. Not tonight, not ever.